Hello and welcome to the second part of live screening the whole crypto market with Python. In this part, we are going to utilize the live data stream from the previous video. So be sure that you have watched that. I will link it below. We are going to store this in the simplest form of a database, which is integrated in Python SQL Lite. After we did that, we are going to pull and do some basic analysis of the live data. So it's going to be exciting and it is strongly recommended to not skip a single second of the video. Very important also, this is most probably not the end of the series. So going forward, we could do some insanely interesting data analysis, data science on the resulting huge data sets. So like the video, comment, share and all that good stuff. Thank you. All right, so let's get started. This is the script from the previous video. So let's execute it once again. So pulling all symbols here, then doing some manipulations and filterings to that list so that we have all symbols in relation to USDT. I've explained that in detail in the previous video. Then setting up a live data stream using the Unicorn Binance WebSocket library using a one minute K line data stream here on all symbols. And then we are popping data like this. So sometimes you're not getting valid data points. We are coping with that later on, but if I'm pulling it newly here, you will see that I'm getting data for that symbol as an X here. Now this dictionary format, we have to transform into a format which we can conveniently import to an SQL table. So what we're going to do is to filter this dictionary and also doing some data manipulations to have an easier time. So I'm going to do that within a function and I'm doing that with you together step by step. So let's just call that SQL import or maybe also SQL manipulate and this is taking data. So whenever you have data flowing in going forward, this function is transforming this flowing in data into a SQL importable data set or data point. So first step we're going to do is we need the K line where it is. K line, K line, K line, close price. This one here. So this is the close price on that event time. This is currently a Unix timestamp. We will transform that in some seconds. So on this time, whenever that is, you had a price of 2.164. And that's basically all the data you need for this analysis, right? We don't have a use for the rest of the data. So let's just filter this dictionary for only the event time. So we know when this close price was happening and for the close price itself. So first line in our function SQL import will be relevant data. Just calling that rel data here. So I'm taking the K line value here. So I'm filtering this data dictionary for K line then I'm getting this dictionary and this dictionary have to filter for the close price. So the only thing I need to do here is simply taking data, then take K line. So this one here and then filter for close price. So this is my close price for any given incoming data. Now we also need the event time. And as I said, this is a Unix timestamp, but I want to have it in a human readable timestamp here. So I'm just calling that event time here and take the event time. So data event time. So simply extracting this value here and then I'm doing a data transformation. So Unix to human readable. So using pandas convenient to date time function here. Take the event time and define the unit as MS here. 
So with that, I have my event time and now I basically have everything I need to construct a data frame containing the close price and the event time. So I'm just calling that DF here, use pandas data frame constructor here, pass my relevant data, which is simply the close price. So just passing it here. And then I define my column names and my column names are simply the symbol where I'm getting data from, right? So in this case, SNX USCT. So I'm just extracting the symbol value here. So you can either take this one here. So then you just have to take a symbol. You can also filter for K line and then symbol doesn't really make a difference. So I'm using a K line symbol here, but you can also just filter for symbol. So columns have to be called within a, a list or an iterable object here. So I'm just taking data K line and then symbol. So with that, I'm getting for this data point, I'm getting as an X USCT. And the index of my data frame should be my event time. All right. So I'm going to call that index event time. So with that, I have a data frame containing a column value for a given symbol, which is the close price and the index as a timestamp, which is transform to a human readable timestamp here. Then I'm just, so I'm going to show you how this is looking like, then it's easier to understand what I'm going after, going to do after that. So if I'm calling that on the data point, so on this SNX here, I will get nothing because I didn't import pandas. So for that, so import pandas as PD. So this is looking like this, another error. Index must be called with a collection of kind, timestamp, df, from event time, Ah, okay, because this is not in a, a start in a collection. So for that, so as you see, you have to take that as a list as well here. Otherwise, the data frame constructor will complain. So now you see, so the only thing you have to do here is to take that as a collection. So now you see, we are getting the SQL import here. So you see, we have the column name as an X UCT, so our coin, then the close price as the values and the timestamp as the index of that data frame. Now, I want to have this data frame, but I want to see this timestamp as a column value. So you can also do that when calling the data frame. I'm doing that in an extra step here. So first of all, I'm setting the index name to timestamp. So I'm simply giving that index a name. So currently it's called, um, It doesn't have any name as you see. So I'm just taking the F index name and we are just calling that timestamp. So with that, we have an index name and then very important, we want to have the, this value here. This is currently stored as a string value or text value. Reason behind that is because it's coming as a text value from the API. So, uh, you see it here, right? Close price stored as a string value. So we want to transform that to a floating value. So I'm just taking the F, the F as type float to transform that data frame or the values in this data frame to floating values. So that will be a float after this transformation. And then as I said, I want to have the timestamp or the index of that data frame as a column. So I'm just going to reset the index and set the in place argument to true. So if you reset the index of this structure, you're just getting the timestamp index as a column here. 
and have an integer index as you see now. And if you just uh, define in place, you're just replacing the current index. You can also reassign that, right? So you can also take the F equals the F reset index, same uh, story. Okay, so let's call this function once again. So you see how the a data frame is finally looking like. So as you see, now we have S and X, UCT as a floating value here with a time stamp column, column value. So whenever there's, there's data flowing in, you're just getting this data frame, which you then can easily import to SQL using pandas and SQL alchemy. So speaking of SQL alchemy, as I forgot to import pandas, I most probably also forgot to import SQL Alchemy. Yes, I did. Shame on me. So from SQL Alchemy, we need to import create engine. And then we create an engine as in the last video, create engine SQLite. And then I'm just calling it as in the I'm just calling it live, live prices .db. You can give it whatever name you want here. So we have an engine, so we can uh, import to SQL now. And we have to do that within the loop here. So whenever we are getting a new data point flowing in, we want to import to SQL. So we are calling the SQL import function within this uh, endless loop here. And then we are importing that to SQL. So first of all, we have to make sure that we are not getting empty data points. So we have to do some uh, error handling here. You can work with trying exceptions. I'm just working with simple if statements. So if my data, meaning I'm not getting empty data. So if I have data at all, then I want to do something. And I also want to make sure that my data contains enough. So sometimes you're just getting error messages, but if you filter for uh, the length of the dictionary or the JSON coming in, it's larger than three, you're filtering out invalid data points here. I have tested it out. So um, this is how you cope with that. Now, if those conditions are fulfilled, so if I have a valid data point and uh, the data contained in this valid data point is actually long enough to be considered as a, a dictionary like this or JSON object, then I want to create a data frame like this. And I'm just calling that temp for now. So I'm going to store that in a temporary variable here, call the SQL import function on the flowing in data. And then I have this data frame and I just have to import it to SQL now. Very straightforward. So I'm taking temp, getting rid of this print statement here, by the way. Take temp to SQL, to import it to SQL. And then I'm just taking the column value here as the table name where I'm uh, storing the data in. So the table name in the SQLite database, in this case, will simply be as an X UCT. So I'm taking temp underscore columns and then the second column, okay, right? So I can show you here columns. And if you take the second column, you will get the asset or coin name. So this is the table name in the database. Then we need to provide the engine. So we are writing this to liveprice.db then I want to have no index. So I don't want to import this uh, integer index here, simply ignoring that. And if the table exists, I want to append, which can definitely happen, uh, which should happen, right? Because for this uh, symbol, we should get in the next second a new price and then next second new price. And then we're just appending it in the database. And that's already it for importing the data. So as soon as you're running this, just be aware that you're building up a very huge database, right? You are importing second granular data for all 
coins. So I think it was more than 400 coins or so, right? So you're building up a quite large database, but don't worry. So you can just, whenever you have uh, executed that, you can just look for this file on your system, liveprices.db or whatever you named it, and just delete it, problem solved. So let's execute that. And this is not throwing any issues. So this seems to import successfully to the database. And now let me open up a new notebook here. And now we are actually pulling the data here. So a new notebook. I need to do some imports for that. So let me just copy paste that from my other screen here. So we need pandas, we need daytime. I'm going to explain why I need daytime in some seconds. And we also need the engine. So I can just copy paste that from this notebook here. So engine, we got it here. These are the libraries. And then I just check what tables we have in our database now. So in this life prices database, and there is a SQLite specific syntax, which you can use for that. That's simply, so I'm using pandas read SQL to provide SQL syntax here. And then you can just take select name from SQLite schema where type table. And with that, you're reading out all table names in your current database. Very useful, very, very nice. So. Currently, I have 359 uh, tables in my in my life prices uh, SQLite database. And as you see, yeah, you, you're getting something like Forex uh, values here as well, or similar to Forex Euro to US dollar Tita. So as you see, you will need to do some more filtering here. So it's not yet perfect, but we can work with that. It's no, it's not a, not a problem. So 359 rows we have imported and these are being filled every second. Now we want to, um, yeah, analyze what data is flowing in. And as you want to pull data for a certain look back period. So let's just say I want to have prices for the last two minutes, we need a function which is pulling uh, the data from the database for the last n minutes, right? So this is a function I'm going to set up. And very important here, as Binance is in the UTC time zone, and I am not, I have to use a UTC, UTC timestamp to take my time zone align to the UTC time zone to actually pull data two minutes or n minutes back. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So PD timestamp UTC now. You see that uh, this is 921. And if you see, if I'm just pulling from my time zone, you see it's already a bit later here, right? Now, if I would take my time zone value and uh, filter for the last n minutes, I wouldn't get the right data. So I have to use a UTC timestamp here. And I need a function to get a timestamp now minus the amount of time I want to look back. So I'm just calling that, I'm just setting that up in a function here. So just calling that last n minutes with a given n. And this is simply taking the UTC timestamp and subtracts certain minutes. And this is exactly where I need my data module because the data module has a very handy function, which is the time delta. And you can just pass minutes here. So if I take the UTC now, subtract one minute, I get one minute later than the, eh, not later, earlier than the current uh, UTC timestamp. So you see, this is the current. If I go back, I am going one minute back. All right, so this is exactly what I'm doing in this function. So I'm just returning what I showed you here, but I want to have it as a string value. Otherwise, I cannot pass it to SQL. So SQL doesn't understand this timestamp uh, 
data type. So I'm just doing a string format of exactly what I did here. So return string of this and then pass minutes as n. So you have a flexible look back window. So, and now we are getting to the interesting part. We are going to read out some data. So uh, let's <laughs> just call that test for now. We're using read SQL. Then I'm using an F string here. So F string, you can just pass um, values into a string. So I'm going to set up, I'm thinking about how I can set that up that you can read it better. So let's do it like this. So now I'm just pulling price data for, let's take the most popular one, Bitcoin. And now select star from Bitcoin. Let's keep it simple uh, for now. Uh, engine. This is not working as I would like. Uh, this could work, yeah. Okay, and now you see that I'm getting 507 row for only one asset, right? For only one coin. So as you see, it's very, very granular here. It's secondly granular, as you see. And this is how the data in the database would look like, right? Now I need to extend that um, query here by inputting this function. So I'm not getting data back until 9.04 here, but uh, I'm getting back data 9.24, let's say, to uh, 9.22 or something like that. So I have to pass this function into this query here. And now my F string actually makes sense because this would also work if you just get rid of this F. So we need to amend the query where the timestamp and then the timestamp should just be larger than going back two minutes here, right? So larger or equal to, and then uh, I just take the function here. So I'm using uh, brackets here, get last min, pass two, and that should do the job. So did I mess up somewhere? Doesn't look like it. Get last min, yeah, I messed up, sorry. Okay, so I have where timestamp, get last min two here, and now I'm just getting the last two minutes. So the most current is 9.26. And this is two minutes ago. So one minute, I'm getting data one minute back and so on, right? I think you got the point. And now this is super interesting because you can just observe second granular data for all coins, right? So I can do that for all coins here. So I can pass ETH getting data for ETH. I can pass whatever coin Doge, getting Doge data. Uh, let's extend that to two minutes. I'm getting, what What are you guys interested in? Cardano or whatever you, you're doing, right? So you can screen all those symbols which are stored here, all right? So um, let's actually do some more analysis here and then I'm, I'm uh, ending this video. Don't want to bore you here. So let's pull Bitcoin again. Let's visualize that. So last two minutes of Bitcoin. So I want to just plot this price. Therefore, I'm setting the index here to timestamp. So test set index timestamp. And then I'm just going to plot. And now you see you, you you see this super granular movement here, right? Of the Bitcoin price. Looks a bit off here on the axis, but should solve itself if you just increase the, the look back. Just quickly check if the columns are in the right format here. Yeah. 
So whenever you execute this newly, you're getting new data. And this is, I at least I find this super interesting. Yeah, the axes are a bit off currently because the price is just too high for the current plot. But if you check that out for, let's take uh, ETH, you will see that this makes a lot more sense here, right? So you see there was quite a movement in the last three minutes, but then the price basically stayed the same, all right? And yeah, so going forward, what you can do or what I will do is a bit dependent on how you like this, how you found this valuable or interesting. Now you could just take all symbols. So you're querying all values here, and then you find the asset which was rising the most over the last, let's say two minutes, over the last four minutes, over the last five minutes, which asset was dropping the most. And then you can really get some valuable information on how the crypto market is moving in real time. So let's execute that for, <laughs> you see there is quite a downward movement. Let's see what was happening there. One, six, three, one, seven, five. I mean, it looks, it looks like a big movement, but if you check one, six, three, two here to one, six, three, one point seven, five, it's just relative to the to the movements before here, right? So let's pull for the last five minutes. Yeah, you see these apparent movements here are actually just some minor uh, movements here, at least for the time period of five minutes. All right, yeah, that's it for this video. So I would be quite excited and happy if um, you leave some feedback on the video because then we could just cover a bit more deep diving analysis to all the coins so appreciate your feedback and thanks a lot for watching and i'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos